Hi, this is Pastor Dan from Abundant Life Church. Good morning, and thanks so much for, for joining us online today. I just wanted to, to let you know of, a, of an exciting event happening tonight, live on our Facebook page. It's going to be our Refresh Worship Night at 6 o'clock p.m., and we really hope that you'll join us. It's just a great time of refreshing through music and through scripture. So please join us tonight at 6 p.m. live on our Facebook page. Growing up, I loved to play soccer. I played it for many years. And normally when I played soccer, I loved to play defense. But remember, I remember one time in public school... I asked my soccer coach if I could try out at goalie. And he was like, sure. He always wanted to give opportunities to, to his players. So he said, absolutely. We have a tournament coming up. This would be a great opportunity for you to try out in, in goal. And I was so excited. I practiced and practiced. I was doing so great. Uh, and, and all the rest of my team was like, oh, man, we're going to do so well in this tournament. Well, we get to the tournament, we get into our first game, and, and we're up against one of our rival public schools. And the game goes along, and for whatever reason, our team kind of just falls apart, collapses. And, and they just keep coming and coming, and, and in the game, we lose badly. Like 10 nothing was the final score. And I'm sitting on the sidelines. I'm dejected. I'm just, ah. I was so excited to play goal. And we lost 10-0. And my coach comes over to me. And he, and he sits down. And, and he's like, how you doing? How am I doing? We just lost 10-0. And it's all my fault. And he's like, no. You didn't lose this game. We all lost this game. I lost this game. And the coach uh, assured me that this was a loss for the whole team. I didn't lose the game. We all lost together. And he let me know that in the next game, I would be starting again. And in that game, we came out on top. It was a great, great game. But my coach taught me that day about loyalty, about being loyal to one another, even when you're losing, even when the game doesn't go the way that you thought it would go. The word loyalty is actually defined as a strong feeling of support or allegiance. And this morning, I'm going to read a story in the Bible or some, some scripture verses in the Bible. They're going to talk about three guys who were loyal to God despite the unfairness of their circumstances. So let me just read it for you. It's in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 to 22. It says this, It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son Isaac, though God had promised him. Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham assumed that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. It was by faith that Isaac blessed his two sons, Jacob and Esau. He had confidence in what God was going to do in the future. It was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons, and bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. And it was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, confidently spoke of God's bringing the people of Israel out of Egypt. He was so sure of it that he commanded them to carry his bones with them when they left. Now the first thing that we see here is that Abraham remained loyal to God when sacrifice was required. Now, for some people watching this today, you hear about the promises of God, 
and you think about your own life. You think about your health. My health isn't that great. My marriage is falling apart. This pandemic has, has taken my anxiety to, to higher levels. And you think, I don't believe in the promises of God. Well, if that is you, you can relate to Abraham. See, in Genesis 22, verses 6 to 8, it, sa- it says these verses. As Isaac and Abraham went on together, Isaac said, Father, yes, yes, my son, Abraham replied, we have the wood and the fire, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? God, he'll provide a lamb, my son. Abraham answered, and they both went on together. See, Abraham was struggling here. This is a dad who is, he's wrecked with grief. He doesn't fully understand what God is asking him to do. God, I don't, I don't get it. How, how can I do this? This is my, my son Isaac. You want me to sacrifice him? And this is the conversation between a boy wrestling through his feelings and an anguished father. And maybe he was starting to ask, God, how could you ask me to do this? How could you ask me to sacrifice my son? Maybe he went back in his mind to when he, when he held him in his arms when he was first born. When all the people came to visit and they were so excited. Abraham, your son, he's so beautiful. He looks just like you. And now he's, he's walking along with him and God wants him to sacrifice him. How could this be, God? But for some of you, what is God asking you to sacrifice? What is God saying that maybe you need to sacrifice your time? You're spending your time on the wrong things. Or maybe it's your money. Maybe you're you're just you're in trouble with your money and you need to get help. Or maybe life's just tough right now. You're struggling. You have fears and you have doubts. But what are those things that you need to sacrifice? And you need to think about what God is asking you to sacrifice at this time. The second thing that we see is Jacob remained loyal to God despite life's challenges. And for some of you, as soon as I said the word challenge, your loyalty to God just stopped. That's it. As soon as something bad happens, you're like, I'm out. I can't do this anymore. See, Jacob, he had a tough life. The first things that we kind of see are some highlights of what his life looked like. He, He tricked his father, Isaac. And his mom actually helped him do this. And because of this, his brother Esau didn't like him very much. And he actually pursued his brother Jacob. And did I mention that Esau was a skilled hunter? And then Jacob ends up having to work 14 years for the woman that he loved because his uncle Laban. And then... When he became a dad and he had his sons, he had a son, Joseph, whom he loved very much. But his other brothers didn't like Joseph. And they hatched this plan. And then for a few years, Joseph was sold to Egypt. And Jacob had no idea where his son was. Jacob was a guy that seemed to want to learn life the hard way. Maybe you know somebody like that. Maybe you are that someone. The Super Bowl trophy is named after this guy named Vince Lombardi. 
And he said this quote, it's not whether you get knocked down, it's whether you get back up again. Jacob was knocked down several times throughout his life, but he kept getting back up. Hebrews 11 verse 21 says this, that when Jacob was old and dying, he bowed in worship and leaned on his staff. The word staff here actually refers to God's favor. Jacob, in humility, leaned on God. Despite life's challenges, Jacob remained loyal to God. And the third thing is that Joseph remained loyal to God by looking at the bigger picture. Now, what does the big picture of your life look like right now? Are you full of hope or despair? Are you optimistic or slightly pessimistic? Do you say, my future doesn't look very good? Or do you say, I am excited for what my future looks like? The writer of Hebrews mentions in Hebrews 11 verse 22, God bringing his people out of Egypt. Joseph is warning the people that their time in Egypt is going to change. It's going to look very different. But don't fear. God is going to bring you out of Egypt. Now it says that the Israelites were probably occupied in Egypt for about 430 years. And in that time, about 100 to 150 years, they were slaves in Egypt. And it was interesting to mention that Joseph even said, when you do leave Egypt, please take my bones with you. Exodus 13 verse 19 says that Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. He honored that promise made to Joseph. In this verse in Exodus, this is referring to when Moses was leading the people out of Egypt he made sure that he had Joseph's bones with him. Louis Giglio said this, God is using your present circumstances to make you more useful for later roles in his unfolding story. You see, God wants to take your circumstances. Whether you're having a great life right now or life is very, very unfair, But he's taking it all and he's making it useful because his unfolding story is bigger than what we can see. And he has amazing and great plans for your life. But loyalty to God is going to require some sacrifice. It's going to take you sacrificing some things before God and allowing God to shape you and to make you into the person that he wants you to be. Loyalty to God, unfortunately, does not exempt you from struggles. As we learned through Jacob, that life is sometimes hard and is unfair. Life gets tough. I can can relate to that. Life is not always easy, but I know that being loyal to God, life is always better. And loyalty to God will give you a glimpse of the big picture. It will help you to see beyond what you can see. And look to a God who has amazing things in store for your life. He has a bright future for you. But you need to take your eyes off your situation and focus on God. There is a a great worship song called, Lord, I Need You. And Jose and Benoit are going to come at this time and sing this worship song for you.
just where you are, and where you are, Lord, Lord, I am free, and holiness is Christ in me, and where you are, Lord, Lord, Temptation comes my way, and when I cannot stand, I fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay, and when I cannot stand, I fall on you. Jesus, you're my that 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 song was a a great encouragement and a reminder to you how much we need the Lord in these these days when life is especially in these days when life is unfair how much we so desperately need the Lord I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us online for Abundant Life Church online now to him who is able to do far more than we could ever ask or imagine through the power of the Holy Spirit be glorified in the church and in our lives throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen.